So we got four pops right here, right up there, one in the middle, five pops, I guess. One there, one there, whole thing comes off. Pull this whole interior out, weather stripping. Wire harness for the lights, front lights. This one's broken, but there's a little little release tab right here. Small, you can probably catch your fingernail on it. And then you just pull it right off. Then there's uh, about a half a million, uh, 10 millimeters. These panels have to come off too, I just realized. This just more bigger pop bits you get with your fingers. Probably two or two. And then just all the way up. Man, they really made it nice. There's a little uh Christmas tree or no, a little another pop it that you might have to remove depending. That one just comes off. Slide it around the hood strap and it should come right out of there. So, if you're like me, you have R134A gauges and you don't want to buy a whole no gauge set for 100 bucks. So, you, I got these little adapters. Problem is, it makes them longer and this, this cold side hits right up on this bracket here. You can't get it on straight. We're gonna pop th these poppets, or and then we should be able to. There we go. The high side was. You could get onto that easily. So now that we've recovered the system, we're gonna take this big old filter out of the way. That should be loose because the bolts that hold this in hold that bucket in. We have the compressor right here. So we're gonna take this cowl off. And if you look where it connects up into there, it's gonna, it just pop right off. And then you just snake this out of there. Next, we're gonna get this surge tank for whatever coolant this is out. And there, it looks like there's four bolts holding it in. One, two, three, four. I got a wobbly extension just to make this one a little easier around these uh, battery cables and then this one looks problematic I want to make sure and get it out not let it fold down in there okay so to get this out of the way well, I'm just going to use two zip ties like this you know daisy chain them together make it a little easier wrap around the bottom end there's a little hole up here I'm trying to get it through. Pull it up, get it started so you can let go and then move this around. You go to the highest spot you can reach it. So this is our new one and we're just analyzing it to show you how the connector works. So there's a little lock here. This red part is the locker and what you're going to do is somehow get a and when it's out like this, you should be able to use your finger. And you'll notice this little tab right here will move. When the tab is closed, it does not move. Be careful, this is high voltage, so but everything's insulated, but just make sure it's in service mode before you start. So you'll notice this, these wires coming out of the compressor goes all the way back, wraps all the way up into there. It's the jiggling wire, is it. And the connector is just back there. So this is exactly how it's sitting back there. And it's kind of hard because there's a piece of metal right here where my hand is. So you're kind of going in blind. You can kind of see the bottom of this connector if you look through the uh, underneath this where this reservoir is. 
and you can kind of angle i have a little homemade pick here but a regular pick will work fine and you kind of just find it by looking underneath and then i just pulled it over here and then pull it back sling your left arm around in there and it pulls right out all right so we have our two hoses that go into the compressor itself and then you have an electrical connector and then you have three t40 bolts one on the top one on the side those are the easy ones hard one is directly below this top one down there we have a vacuum on the system so it'll make a little bit of a noise oh that's way better you actually see the bolt now so you're gonna get on the bolt and i have a little uh quarter inch socket and then a t40 bit and you just crack it loose with this setup and then once it's loose you just have to go do this by hand and once you get all that it out with your fingers keep it in there actually <laughs> while we pull it out seeing the compressor move because you got all the bolts loose now support it to make it easier to take out Pull that bolt out. Oh, don't forget to disconnect this connector. Pin. She's out. And then we're going to retain this bolt. Just make sure when you go in with it, you put that bolt back in <laughs> before you put it in. Line this up. Put this new compressor in there. I like to keep the caps in that way you're not contaminating anything and then we'll take the caps out once we're all in and there's no dust flying anywhere everywhere from us tightening bolts and stuff this sucker around don't forget your bottom bolt the bolts are all the same you don't have to worry about that put the bottom bolt in there slide this in there Started the thread on the bottom real quick, tight or loose or whatever. In there, get it started so it sits on its own. Make sure that bottom one is started, and then you're good for the wrench. You kind of have to like jiggle the whole unit up and down. because it's gonna be resistive in a few spots. And then I'm gonna do the hardest one first, just snug it up as tight as it was before. And the new one's installed. Just need to plug in all the harnesses, wrap it up where it was before. I just shoved it up into here and you can see the connector the bottom of the connector at least the red connector thing it faces towards the front of the car or faces towards your belly any kind of grease really we're just going to lubricate these o-rings that way you don't split it coming in and out just get a little bit on the finger it doesn't have to be a lot just make sure not to get it inside because this is well if you have the right oil it doesn't matter but if you don't don't get it inside so it doesn't get into the system. <laughs> Gonna get some more oil here on the finger. Just lubricate the O-ring. You're gonna pop it on, seat it, then put the nut on. Now, snug her up. There we go. This is kind of a big wrench, but just a little past snug and she'll be all right so now that everything's connected it should be a sealed system pull a vacuum on it leak test and then evacuate all the moisture and then, and then you're going to open up your gauges you'll notice the sound difference 
Can you see all this smoke right here? Moisture that we put in when we uh, disconnected them. You're just gonna wanna pull a vacuum for just enough to get to 30. Cause you wanna do a leak test just in case you have to open it up and address a leak. You wanna make sure you get to 30. Closing since we're at 30. And then you can wait like 30 to an hour. I like flicking it. And then you're just gonna make sure that in 30 minutes this doesn't drop. It's been about 30 minutes. And if you notice, flick that again just in case. It's usually a little stuck like mine, but you'll notice it's still at 30. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull vacuum for probably another 30 minutes to an hour. This part you can do as little or as much as you want to do. We're basically evacuating all the contaminants inside the, all the lines, condenser, evaporator, making sure you get all the moisture out. That way you're getting refrigerant only. And turn everything back on. And let it suck for as long as you want. I'd say minimum 30 minutes though. We're gonna put the coolant level sensor back in. And then step that, put it back. Ties like that. Fit that in there. Just make sure it seats back here at the firewall or the electric wall. Let's go to the filter. don't mind taking some time after to vacuum it out. We're just uh, trying to go to dinner soon. <laughs> <laughs> Million bolts back in. If you didn't line the filter up right, these two are not going to line up. You see how that's not lined up? I kind of been having to like push it and then put it in all over the place. Just make sure you don't go cross thread and stuff. In case we kidnap a kid, it can have a light in the trunk. <laughs> I, there was a lady at RC really once, and uh, I was loading something into her car, and she was like, she goes, what's this little tab? And it's like the, the emergency tab release for the trunk, and it's got like a little person jumping out of the car, and she's like, what is this? And I'm like, it's so when you kidnap someone, they can get out of the car. And they're like, you're joking. And I'm like, look at it. And there's a picture of a dude running out of the car. <laughs> Line all this crap up. I kind of just like, see this little divot right here? I kind of assume that that's like the sharpest point of curve. Slide it into this little strut spot. Pulled off. This, put this centerpiece on first. clicks into that, that clicks into that, which we still need this pliable for now. Got it right back on here. We're pulling vacuum. We're going to just close these valves up, remove the pump from the equation. You'll hear a hiss from this line. I have this converter, since these are 134A gauges, I had to get this special left-handed thread T-tap or whatever they call it. Then I have a little converter here. You're gonna puncture the thing. It's still a closed system. We have this closed off. We still have vacuum. And then you're gonna do this with your fingernail until you see some white stuff come out and your finger gets cold. Like that, my finger's cold. So <laughs> be careful. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna open up both lines. The car is not on, so we're just gonna fill it up because we have a vacuum. It will fill up to whatever the PSI of the can. Charge it up. Now, when you're charging with the compressor on, on the other hand, you only wanna do it on the cold side. But when it's under vacuum and you're starting from negative or vacuum, I do both, it's quicker. You can see the refrigerant in here. 
Just filling up that sight glass there. Well, we're about halfway through this can and it's already overcome the pressure. So we're gonna need to turn the system on. We're gonna turn on the AC. Just hit, boom, the AC button. So you'll see the fluids moving again. See the liquid flowing. And you'll hear the noise of the compressor. It's not making a grinding noise anymore. <laughs> this can's pretty much done. Let's back off the screw. And you're gonna close off the ports again. I just realized we didn't close that before we turn the AC on. It's low enough pressure though. It's fine. It's the righty loosey. Lifty tidy. And then I always do this for every go. I'm always doing this thing. You open up only the low line. Right now, we put about four cans into it. We're about to add the fifth can. And here's our pressures. There's a lot of ambiguous data out there because the Model X, there's all different options. It says if you don't have something with the rear AC, it should take, so no rear AC should take 700 to 740 grams, but this technically has rear AC, it's just not controlled rear AC. But we put 700 grams in and the, 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 the pressures were way low on both high and low, needed more refrigerant. So we went to the store, got more refrigerant, we got two more cans. We're now on the last can. It's can number five. Each, each can is eight ounces and we're approaching. Vents are cold, but we're not quite up to the temperature, uh, to the pressures for the ambient temperature of 78 degrees outside. Uh, we'll show you right now a picture of the desired uh, pressures you should be getting at each temperature. Leading up into uh, getting those pressures, you'll get weird readings until you're like three cans to four cans in. We're sneaking up on the final amount right now. Yeah. So we're at 160-ish. 4.1 cans if you have no lumps. It's like 950. 950, it's okay. Yeah. So if you have rear controlled AC, you might have to fill up more. It's kind of ambiguous out there, but we, this is kind of showing you proof that we don't have controlled rear AC, but it took more than 700 grams. We're gonna take it for a test drag. So we just got 37 degrees with everything fully charged. All the pressures seem to be all right. I'm assuming that the low pressure being 25 stagnant is probably just that it's not a internal combustion engine. It's running at one speed instead of a varying idle speed. And That should be about it. The only thing I'd worry about as far as tooling goes is that T40. This is all I have here at my house. And that's just the biggest size. So it's a T40. If you can get a short stubby socket, it'd probably be better. Just a 10 millimeter, I think everything else was. And then pick. You know, just like a standard, like 90 degree pick or like one of them curvy ones. Zip ties, everything else is kind of just take off and put back on. All right, we're on the road. We're reading 36 degrees. We're living in the winter in the middle of the summer. <laughs> 77 ambient air temperature. It's nighttime. It's incredibly cold. Hopefully this helps out. Thanks for watching.